Update, my girlfriend is convinced that I tried to cheat on her. Original post, I, 27 male, and my girlfriend, 24 female, we'll call her Evie, have been dating for about a year now. Just this past week we went on a big vacation with our friend group including her best friend Tara, 26 female. Three nights ago, Evie and I were in our hotel room just chilling together, when I went down to the bar to get a bottle of wine and some ice for us, and I saw Tara at a table with some guys I'd never seen before and she looked pretty tipsy. I didn't think it looked all that safe for her being on her own like that, so I went over and made small talk, and eventually asked if she needed help getting to her hotel room since it was pretty late. She agreed and we left together. But once we were in the little walkway heading back to the main hotel building, she backed me against the wall and made a pass at me, asking me to spend the night with her. I put my hand on her shoulder to move her back and turned her down, and told her she was drunk and I'd never do that to Evie, and I left her there to get back to her room herself since I was uncomfortable. Here's where I messed up, I didn't tell Evie about it when I got back to our room, because her and Tara are so close and I didn't want to ruin the vacation. But I did intend to tell her once we got back home. The only trouble is, the next day at breakfast while I was sleeping in, Tara told Evie that I was the one who'd made a pass at her while she was drunk, and that I'd gotten jealous and possessive when I saw Tara talking to those guys. And needless to say, Evie believed her. She came back to the room just quietly crying and told me what Tara had told her, and that she'd be staying in Tara's room for the remainder of the trip, and that we'd talk about our relationship when we got back home. Basically, she's going to dump me. Now I know what half of the comments are gonna say. To cut my losses with Evie if she's enough of an idiot to believe Tara over me. The trouble is, I really messed up at the beginning of our relationship after our first fight. I got really drunk and started messaging girls trying to hook up with them, and Evie found out and was absolutely devastated, so I understand if she doesn't 100% trust me with stuff like this. Also, she's only known me a year and a half at most while Tara her whole life, and she considers Tara her second chance at having a sibling. Evie's older brother passed when he was 18 and she was 10. Also, there's the fact that I'm madly in love with her and she's the girl I want to marry, and I just can't lose her over this. I don't understand why Tara lied, but right now my priority is getting Evie back. How do I fix this? What should my next steps be? Now for the top advice before reading the updates. That's a tough one buddy. I know hindsight is 2020, but if something happens, you should always be the one to tell them. Think about how confused and embarrassed she must have been because she didn't even know you ran into her friend. I'd give her the full story, apologize for not thinking you needed to tell her, and let her know how important she and this relationship is to you. Don't smother her and let her process, but stay adamant about the truth. But be kind, because hearing your friend who's like a sister would betray her like that, probably hurts more. Man, unfortunately because you messed up the first time and she's still probably trying to move past that first time, and you did, I don't know if there's any way you can say this. And your friend is not your friend if she does stuff like that. At all. So stop calling her your friend cause she's not. Because friends don't do stuff like that and it sounds like she's jealous. That's what it sounds like. Like she wants you for herself, because no girl does that just because she lied, it's because she probably wants you herself. Women tend to do that and do not say nothing about it, or just don't want you to be happy with someone else. So that's one thing you got to get out. Do not talk to her anymore. If it was me, I cut her off. But oh man, I don't know. That's just one of those things where you can try to explain yourself. But I don't know what good it can do especially since you messed up the first time and you're trying to correct it. But I don't know. Maybe you have any type of text message or something of that nature, or maybe it's some way you can do it. But I honestly don't even know. You need to tell Evie all of this and hope she believes you. It's your best chance at fixing things. If she doesn't believe you, the relationship might be over for now. She might eventually figure out Tara and what she's been doing if it happens to her again. Tara's hateful. In general, this makes things really difficult because she most likely won't be able to hang out with both of you again. The only other advice I have is maybe pressure Tara into telling the truth, but confront her in person. Don't text her where she could use that against you. Like straight up take Evie and go over to Tara's, and ask her why she said something untrue. If you're being truthful, you're 100% allowed to do that. If Tara doesn't confess, you can hope Evie takes your word for it. Tell Evie what happened and ask her to organize something with Tara where Tara doesn't know you're coming. And then point blank ask her why she lied. She most likely is never used to someone confronting her. Trust is really easy to destroy in relationships and hard to cultivate. And now for the first update. The vacation is coming to an end and a lot has happened in the past two days. After I made my post on here, I spoke to my best friend Matt, who's on the vacation with us, about what had gone on and what Tara had told Evie. And I was fully prepared for him to take their side since he's got a lot of baggage from being cheated on in the past. 
but instead, he told me he believed me. And not only that, but he brought up real concerns about the way Tara has been treating Evie in the time that we've known them. I can't say I've ever noticed it, because Tara and I have never hung out that much since our personalities clash, and Evie only ever has nice things to say about her. But Matt pointed out multiple occasions where Tara has put Evie down and been mean to her about her appearance and personality, and how it seems like Tara has this really manipulative hold over her. Looking back on it now, I definitely see it, and I feel guilty for never noticing sooner. He and I devised a plan to talk to Evie together without Tara there to hopefully get her to see sense. At first, she didn't want to hear me out, but after Matt explained his concerns, she got all quiet and sat down and just kinda stared off for a moment. Evie told me that she didn't think Tara would do something like that, and she never meant to be hurtful, and Evie called herself too sensitive sometimes, but I could see her starting to doubt Tara and make sense of things. Eventually, I managed to convince her that we should confront Tara together, and she agreed. As you can probably expect, Tara got incredibly defensive and pulled out the crocodile tears, and she started accusing Evie of choosing a man over her. I could see Evie losing her confidence, but she eventually told Tara that she didn't believe her, that she thought Tara had left her lying habits behind in their teen years. Tara then switched on a dime and got really nasty and vicious, and started calling Evie names that I won't repeat here, and more or less admitted to lying because in her opinion, Evie doesn't deserve the nice things she gets, including me apparently. She was screaming so loud, people in the next hotel room came to check on us. I got Evie out of there and told Tara to stay away from her and not try to contact her. When Evie and I were alone and had made up, she told me that wasn't the first time Tara had been nasty to her like that, and that it happened a lot in their teens and early 20s when Evie didn't go along with what Tara wanted, but that it hadn't happened in a few years, so she thought Tara had changed and gotten better. I would argue that it was one of the best vacations in your life. The growth, communication, and support of true friends and a good relationship won out over manipulation and selfishness. Yes, I suppose that is a much nicer way of looking at it. While it wasn't much of a fun vacation, I guarantee whatever the cost, it was worth it to get the girlfriend away from the toxic witch. She will likely have many therapy appointments ahead anyway to deal with all of this, but if this vacation hadn't happened, she may have spent years tagging along with this toxic friend leaving her life in the dust behind her. I'm glad things are better between you and Evie. I really hope you learn to be honest immediately and inform your partner when someone, especially a friend, makes a pass at you like this. So much heartache and drama could be avoided by doing so. However, because it eventually exposed the piece of work Tara is, it worked out. But it absolutely could have gone the other way given your history. Evie and you could benefit from couples counseling to learn to communicate better in your relationship. Evie could also benefit from individual sessions to help deal with the treatment Tara subjected her to all those years, and further help dealing with her brother's death. I wish you both good luck on your journeys and working on your relationship together. Now for the last update. I'm just posting this here because a few things have happened, and some of you who followed me might want to know. We all managed to get home okay from the trip, and Evie stuck to her word on not being in contact with Tara. But Tara has tried ceaselessly to get in contact with her. When Evie blocked her number and social media accounts due to the endless calls and messages, Tara started calling the house phone or using pay phones to try and bypass that. It's gotten real psycho too, as she's been calling us in the middle of the night. We're reluctant to get rid of the house phone because Evie's parents are technophobes and prefer to call her up the old-fashioned way, and that's how they stay in contact. When the calling didn't work, she started sending Evie letters the contents of which were telling her that she's made a huge mistake, that I'm mistreating and manipulating Evie, and that Tara is just trying to keep her safe. There were even a few vague threats of self-harm in there if Evie didn't forgive her and dump me. I honestly thought Tara was just a reformed mean girl who loved attention when I first met her. But after all this, it's clear she has mental issues like a personality disorder or something. On Friday, she showed up at the apartment while I was cooking and told Evie again that I was mistreating her and that she would call the police to make a complaint if that's what it took for her to leave me. She even brought up Evie's late older brother, and told her that he'd be so disappointed to see her with a man like me. Yet, Evie told her gently and calmly to leave, and that she didn't want to get a restraining order against Tara, but that she would, if this kind of stuff continued. It astounds me that she can still be empathetic and kind to Tara after everything that's happened, but since Friday we haven't heard anything, and the calls to the apartment have stopped. I suggested filing a restraining order anyway, but Evie is reluctant to because all of our friends have now cut Tara off, and it seems like she's going through some kind of mental breakdown, and she doesn't want to do anything that might make Tara do something stupid to herself. 
Evie has contacted Tara's parents to express her worry and see if they can do something to help her get professional help. I think I'm still going to try and convince her to get a restraining order though if things start up again. But the more I learn about Tara and her past with Evie, the more I'm relieved that the friendship is dead, and she can no longer use my girlfriend as an emotional punching bag. I struggle having sympathy for this person. I'll keep posting here until things die down, it's nice to have a place to vent. Bruh, you have to strictly tell your girlfriend she should cut off all contacts with Tara immediately. She is psycho witch. Evie is a doormat to her and still trying to win her approval. Please if she helps her now, Tara will manipulate her again. My girlfriend isn't a doormat. She's a victim of an extremely horrible friendship that's been festering since she was a kid. Also, she's no longer in contact with Tara and has no plans to be in the future. She's just taking preventative measures to make sure Tara doesn't hurt herself or somebody else by contacting Tara's parents, who Evie has a good relationship with. Buddy, she knows what Tara can do, yet, she let her into her life. She needs to be stronger than this. Tara came to your house today. Next thing you know, she is ending one of you. You need to get a restraining order from her. Tara's parents have thankfully been understanding, and have managed to stop the harassment for now and have threatened to 5150 her if she continues. I'm confused, why can't your technophobe parents just call your cell phone from their house phone? At first I think it was just stubbornness on their part. They had a weird insistence that Evie and I should have a home phone. But since I've posted this and we explained everything to them, they've agreed to contact us via our mobiles. Old people are funny like that. They need that damn restraining order. Or move out because Tara is a huge red flag, possibly a psycho. According to Gavin De Becker in his book The Gift of Fear, restraining orders are generally triggers that escalate violence. Police do not enforce them. They only talk to people after they've broken them. Now for the last story. How can I, 28 female, politely ask my close friend to stop making fun of how much money me and my boyfriend make? Her husband makes a lot and she doesn't have to work in life, but she makes lots of disrespectful comments towards me and my relationship and future kids. And I hate it. Background. Both me and my boyfriend work, he makes more than me which I like. I went back to uni at 23 to try get some qualification, and I managed and now I have a job I like at a finance firm. My friend judged me for going to school too old and said I should just focus on marriage. But I was really not interested at the time and was working through some mental health issues. I met my boyfriend two years ago and we are really happy together. I truly love him and he is so incredibly good to me. We can't get enough of each other and we're the kind of couple who is always together and we like it that way. I confided in her that maybe I want kids after we get married, which is in like two years time, and this info triggered everything. She has a son with her husband, her husband is a successful kids doctor, and he's lovely, but I am tired of hearing how he's the best guy in the world, and every woman who isn't married to him specifically will just be a loser for life. Seriously this is her thinking. So basically, she constantly keeps reminding me that Europe, where we are born and living, is in a crisis, and she makes jokes that while everyone else, meaning me and my boyfriend, will be starving and regretting their life choices, her actual words, that she will be doing yoga without a care in the world. I told her that thinking this way is really unempathetic, but it's her life. These comments became more common, and she says them randomly. Like I was sick for a bit with a stomach bug, and when I went back to the office, I had that feeling of coming back after vacation and I randomly said it like, going back to the office is always like a slap in the face. And she turned this into a long lecture about how she made better choices by marrying this rich man, and therefore will never understand the struggle of being like us. I honestly hate how she doesn't see that these comments are really rude, especially that she knows I am stressed out, because me and my boyfriend are saving hard because we are moving to his home country. Like good for her that she can never work forever, but some of us can't just do that even if we really want a law. It's also annoying when I share goals with her. Me and my boyfriend have some dreams of buying our own farm, growing food and stuff like that. We are both massive horticulture fans and quite the green thumbs. And instead of saying, oh wow, that's nice, or anything encouraging, she starts putting doubts in my head. I can't even explain how she does it. Anyway I could write forever because this started happening every day now. Anything I share with her she has to make into a competition about how her husband is better than my boyfriend and how her life is always better than mine. She even made a comment about my family life and she knows I grew up in an awful situation and had no parent figures but she says things to get a reaction from me like I'm happy my mom showed me how to blah 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 because otherwise I would have ended up with someone who doesn't earn and I won't be able to stay home with my son now. Is this friendship a lost cause? A hopeless case? I feel like never speaking to her again if I am fully honest. What can I do? Thoughts?
She's a piece of turd. She's also definitely lying. Something's off. She's talking about it this much. She's probably unhappy. And the husband doesn't love her or something. She's compensating heavy. She's definitely overcompensating for low self-esteem. The people who yell the loudest about how perfect their life is are usually just trying to convince themselves, at least in my personal experience. Can you please stop making fun of how much money me and my boyfriend make? I'm glad that you're happy in your life. I'm happy in mine. Have you ever considered that that comment is a little on the offensive side? I'd like to address something with you if you don't mind. Do you think that you are better than me? I'm glad that you're happy in your life. I'm happy in mine. I did say a variation of this at a time, but she believes that I am not truly happy, and it's really frustrating. Also this, I'd like to address something with you if you don't mind. Do you think that you are better than me? She herself sometimes says that her life is better than everyone we know. And she is not wrong. Most of us are early 20s, mid 20s or late 20s, and we are just figuring a lot of life stuff out, while she is settled and sorted for the future. 